So there's a new battery powered lawnmower on the market. Ryobi's got a new one? Nope. Ego? Nope. Husqvarna? No. Wait, why are you talking right now? That was what I was going to say. That's, <laughs> <laughs> this is new. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. This is Pro Tool Reviews Live. Use that hashtag PTR Live when asking us a question or uh, leaving us a comment. We are uh, all about tools. Uh, ProToolReviews.com, ShopToolReviews.com, uh, Outdoor Power Equipment Reviews, or OPEReviews.com. We are live just about everywhere. We're kind of like your personal information on Facebook. So, wow. without any, yeah, yeah, it's kind of like that. So. Listen, man, let's, uh, let's start in and talk about outdoor power equipment. We have uh, slided that section of our show, uh, what, two weeks in a row now? Yeah, I would say that'd be a good place to start since yeah. you forget all the time. There you go. What do we got? Oh, well, so battery powered lawnmowers. All right, so, you know, I use Ryobi's self propel It's like $349 right now at Home Depot. Comes with a five amp hour battery. Yeah, I've, uh, I've I use uh, Ego twenty one right. inch, uh, you know, about uh, five hundred ninety nine bucks with a seven and a half amp hour battery. I think it's four ninety nine right yeah, now. Yeah, you know, oh four ninety nine. It is. Yeah. It dropped about a hundred. Yeah, bucks and then uh, I think last week we talked about the Husqvarna. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, yeah, cordless powered. You know, that's a five ninety nine with two fours, about eight amp yeah. hours of battery yeah. power. Self propelled. Yeah, nice, nice mower. Okay, so what no, you got? None of those. What do you got? We're talking about Mean Green's new push mower. Okay. Okay. Yeah, really, really, you know, we're talking heavy duty steel deck. Okay. You know, obviously cordless technology, big electric motor turning the turning the blade. Self propelled. Uh, no, but roller ball bearings. Roll steel roller ball bearings. What's that? What's that mean? Okay. Yeah. So really, it's a really really nice mower. Yeah. Okay. I'm excited about it. How much is that going to run? Oh, probably twenty five hundred. I mean. Twenty. Twenty five hundred dollars. I thought you said push mower. This is a robotic mower. You're you talking sit about. in it, right? No. <laughs> Does it have a glass top? Yeah, no, it's not. A, it's not a you know a, a stand on or it, a. It's not on. a robotic mower. No, it's no, wait, it, no, no robotic. No, no, it's competing with Ryobi's riding mower. I think right, you, right, can, right. you must be confused. No, no, this is a this is Mean Greens. It's their push mower. Not okay, self just, just, This is an OPE right. update fail. Okay, yeah. how many of you guys would actually buy a twenty five hundred dollar push mower? <laughs> yeah, it's kind of yeah. what I thought. Wait, no, we've got a huge audience. Our, that guy's raising his hand. He doesn't really mean Some, it though. Kick him out. <laughs> anyway. Seriously? Yeah, seriously, yeah. So, I mean, uh, so are there any redeeming qualities here? I mean, what have you seen anything that <laughs> are there any redeeming qualities? Wow. <laughs> it's twenty five hundred dollars. Yeah. No, really. Listen, this is, it, 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 it's a really sturdy built mower, but I don't know where the $2,500 comes. I really don't. That's, is this the same one we saw at GIE? It is. It is. Very um, kind of plain looking. Yeah, very plain looking. Wheels, you know, just put on there. I'm glad it has could. wheels. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be really a pain if you had to do a push mower without wheels. Yeah. So, you know, that's it doesn't something. Have a, no, but really and truly, uh, I, you know, that just seems like an ROI that would be tough to recover. You know, right. it's a long, I think you're right. Long ROI. So yeah. anyway, so that's it. Mean Green's uh, twenty five hundred dollar push mower. If you want one, check it out. Okay. Um, so what about the weather? I mean, you know, the the north has just gotten you know in the recent week or so a another storm. I, I we we had a cold front last week. We did. We it did. knocked us we down did. to seventy eight. Yes. Seventy eight degrees. Yes. I actually uh, and we had like an inch and a quarter of rain. Yeah, I had to actually adjust the thermostat in the car. I mean, it is. We have a, we have one, we can actually set the temperature in there, and I had to I had to bump it a couple degrees. It was a little, yeah. kind of a little chilly. It, exactly right, but no, really and truly. So, uh, you know, the weather, the the south has been you know kind of warmer. Uh, we've had a couple of cold spells, um, but uh, but the the north and is has gotten some cold weather. And you know, I was checking that out because obviously outdoor power equipment. We want to know kind of what's the weather doing because you know our grass season when the when the nights are warm. Uh, when the rain starts coming, the grass really starts growing. Oh, yeah. Uh, but I checked it out, and most of the states in the U.S. are going to be kind of normal or above normal when it comes to temps. However, those northern, kind of the, the northern border states, if you will, in the northeast, is going to remain below normal for a lot of the, the spring season. 
Um, and even down in the California, say, San Fran, a little south of San Fran, not quite the LA. So that was interesting to see that. And then the rainfall, the precipitation is going to kind of have an inverse effect on that. In other words, most of the U.S. on that southern area is going to be below normal. And uh, up I on feel the like we need a green screen. <laughs> And, and you, you know, well, and hey, I, I, I want to know you need how, to be many, a lot how many tool shows can you watch that you get a weather report on? Yeah, you know. Well, listen, we get, you know, construction updates on, you know, on the, okay, on the well, pro this tool is going side. Okay, all right. We're, so <laughs> that's, that's all I was saying is, okay. is it looks like on, on all our southern states and kind of even Midwest and, and even out west uh, on the southern end of it, we're going to have a, an early spring and, uh, you know, warm summer. It's uh, but, April. Yeah. Yeah. What do you, April showers bring May flowers? It's been spring for a month. Yeah, yeah, it's been spring. And that's my point. It just snowed up north. <laughs> it is kind of weird. So that's all I'm saying. Um, based out of Florida, so, in case you didn't know that. So, uh, so in the spring, we're moving out of the winter. Did you know that? Did you realize that the spring comes after the winter? I we live heard in Florida. There is no winter here. What do we do? Yeah, that's true. So everybody outside of Florida, what do you got to do with your with your mowers, with your outdoor power equipment, with any of your equipment, your motorized equipment? Uh, yeah. Slap the battery in after it's been charged and go to town. Yeah, I wish that was the case. But anyway, yeah. so a little mower maintenance. You know, check belts, check fluids, check battery. Not a bad idea to have a battery tender on it or a, a charger or something yes. like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's just a kind of you know, good rule of thumb. Kind of go through all your equipment, make sure it's ready to start for the for the season. Yeah, I did have to charge up my ZT the first time I used it. Yep. It was, uh, it was dead, <clears throat> Desidorna. Yeah. So, so there you go. what would you say is probably the biggest thing people neglect to do that they should really take, a, take one extra step and do it this year? Yeah, probably checking like bearings on spindles, things like that. Mm -hmm. So your, your belts and then your bearings on your spindles, you know, take the belt off, spin the spindle, make sure you don't have any noise or, or you know, some humming or grinding or anything like that. And uh, those spindles are easy to change. So, yeah. you know. The spark plug was always the one that I neglected. Yeah, yeah, that's that's important. Suck, bang, blow. That's the three stages of a combustion engine. Moving Thank on. You. Good job. Yeah. So, and the spark plug is yep. the bang part. So, yeah, yep. yeah, very important. Absolutely important. So, that's it. That's for it. OPE update. All right, we had some really, really. Uh, Cool experiences with a new kind of i don't know why i'm talking to you except that we had a lot of fun with it but i want to know why he's laughing like that I, I don't know our producer was laughing at me so everybody's laughing but listen i want to tell them about this tool <laughs> we got a new tile tool in cool that is a dry cut tile saw mm -hmm. and if you have not seen this thing check out some of this video footage but this will cut tile and it has an integrated uh, dust collection system in it, and it dry cuts tile, and it is a very specific, they, did, they paid attention to a couple different things. They paid attention uh, very much to the design of the tool. This does not look like a tool uh, that came out of somebody's garage. This is a very no. well-designed no. tool, integrated dust collection, and a custom-designed um, diamond blade. And the blade is, is, uh, is actually very unique. It's very thick and sturdy in, in the center. It's got an extra thick um, core to it that you can kind of feel, and it cuts tile like nothing you've ever seen. I mean, just like a wet saw, but without the mess. Mm -hmm. And the big deal here is cleanup. I mean, the cleanup is yeah. absolutely shortened by like an hour per job. Yeah, so that's uh, that seems amazing to me. I know I've seen it made a, make a couple of cuts. Yeah. Um, and, you know, that's part of doing tiling is cleaning up your, your slurry, you know, all that water and the, the mud that it makes from all the tile residual and everything else. So if it's containing all that and you're not having to worry about that and the kind of you can make those rip cuts on rip there when cut you get up against out. the wall mm -hmm. it i mean it's just got they've, they've kind of thought everything everything fits together very nice it's very tight and um and you get um the ability to kind of it kind of cleans itself up and i thought that was cool like you have a vacuum hose attachment you can put on and you can turn on just vacuum mode and literally clean the surface of the top of it clean around your area yep. take that thing off pack it up and just wheel it right out and i mean yeah. it, it's absolutely a new way of thinking about doing tile and if you're doing tile for a living yeah. you've got to take a look at this thing so yeah and you've got i mean you, you've got much faster setup much faster cleanup but then there's also the fact that because you're nearly dust free you bring that to where you're working so you're not yeah, making you're trips gonna, out outside yes. to cut your tile and back in so 
you know, they're, they're estimating that you're going to save, you know, 15 minutes or so on setup, 30 minutes or so on cleanup, but then there's also just the travel time throughout the course of the day. And they're saying an hour a day is what you're going to save. Yeah, between walking, we, you know, we've all done tile jobs. We're sure. walking yeah. in and out of the room to get those tiles cut and, and everything. I mean, it's, it's legit. Yeah. So $1,740, about $1,740 uh, includes the blade and the stand. So I mean, out you know, out the door. If you want to go ahead and get the uh, miter attachment, you you know, that's 150 bucks. Comes with clamps, pretty cool. Uh, vacuum port hose kits, 89 bucks, and the extension cables, 250, which makes you you know, lets you use it like a table saw. So pretty cool tool. Mm -hmm. um, sure. What else we got? We we, uh, we look at a, a little giant ladder. It's kind of cool. Yeah, it? yeah. We got the uh, little giant leveler in. Mm -hmm. and, well, it's a uh, level. What's a level? No. It's a level. No, it's not a level. Oh, leveler. it's not a level. It will leveler. keep you on the level. But, yeah, this is one of Little Giant's multi-use ladders. It's a Type 1A, 300-pound They, do, pound they do actually have other kinds, but, yeah, yeah that's they do. what they're known for. Yeah. yeah, it is. So, I mean, it's one that you can set up as an A-frame. It's, uh, it's extendable on its height, and then you can also rotate it around and use it as a straight ladder or if you want an extension ladder, but it doesn't work like an extension ladder. Yeah. So uh, they got three sizes of this one, 17, 22, and 26 feet. We've got the 22-foot model in. Aluminum, right? Aluminum construction, but it's still heavy. Mm -hmm. So the 22-foot model weighed in at 44 pounds. So definitely not lightweight like that hyperlight extension ladder that we uh, used a little bit ago. And it's kind of like two ladders. I mean, it's a it ladder is, with well, a ladder. I mean, that's kind of what's it's making it heavy. It's There's two a lot of types of ladders. Actually, three. Uh, because you can separate the internal frame of it, and you got to buy the extra trestle brackets to do it. But then it also acts as your your scaffolding trestle. Okay. Um, put some so, boards across and you yeah. Know. So you've got that idea. It's an A-frame. It's a straight ladder. It's your, but it's all because of the adjustable height. It's also taking the place of maybe you're carrying a, a four foot and a six foot and an eight foot at the shop, and then you just take whichever one you need for the day. Well, you've got all those built into one. So. So this is for pretty versatile. This is going to be for the guy who doesn't necessarily need to take a ladder with him every single day. Right. Because uh, if you do, you're going to want something lighter. You're not going to want to haul around 44 pounds every day. But if you're using a ladder occasionally. Uh, or even for your homeowners out there. Uh, this is a very, very versatile ladder that you can take with you. But there's more. Always but more. Wait. Always. Always there's more. There's more. The leveler part of this thing is, uh, is the ratcheting levelers that are on the bottom of one side. Okay, so you got wheels on one side to help you roll around, which is actually really nice because of the weight. On the opposite side, there's a, a ratcheting leveler on either side. So if you're on a slope, you just kick that foot down to wherever you need it to make sure that you're actually climbing on level surface. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, it very does. flexible. It is very, very flexible. Um, Two hundred fourteen dollars. This is a Lowe's exclusive, so don't go looking anywhere else for that one. And they've got oh, similar well. ladders to that, but the leveler function and that this yeah, particular and ladder. They actually have a, a leveler that you can add to their other ladders. Okay. This is the first one that I'm aware of, anyway. It comes with where it. it's integrated into the ladder itself. And for the price point and the number of ladders that it replaces, it's really a decent value. Okay. Now, anybody that's uh, dealt with um, compressors has probably come across the brand name Campbell Hausfeld. Correct. Um, but they've got some new stuff. They're kind of going in a different direction. They do. Yeah, Campbell Hausfeld's always built compressors, uh, air tools, things like that. Typical, typically, you, usually on the air tool size, was on that kind of entry-level homeowner DIYer. Uh, but they've released a line of air tools uh, that are pretty impressive. Uh, and it's called their GSD series or their Get Stuff Done series. Did they really say stuff? They do. They do, and don't confuse they that don't. with get her done. Get her done. Yeah. <laughs> but it is their GSD series, and All they right. do have, it, it actually does stay. Get, get stuff, stuff done. Okay. Get stuff done. Well, they, they but no, uh, you know, so, so the, they've developed uh, like nine different tools, mm -hmm. um, and it's, you know, no inventions here on the tools itself, but things like a sta straight die grinder, 35 bucks. 35 bucks, and I'm mm -hmm. talking about a nice, compact die 71. grinder. 71. Hmm. The year you were born? No, it would take you could uh, you could buy seventy one of those before you hit the price of a mean green push mower. <laughs> so, back to hot tools. Uh, <laughs> but good point, good point. Now everything is you going to be. You should spill some toothpicks. I'm, anyway, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> no, so the 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 Campbell Hall spelled uh, get stuff done. Tools. Yeah, uh, nine different tools. So straight die grinder, 90 degree die grinder, uh, air hammer. I think the air hammer is like, I want to say, 36 bucks. Um, you know, uh, they got a sander, a six inch air sander, um, air drill. There's a bunch of different tools that are that are all really, really. 
priced at a, at a very good value. Okay, so let me ask you then. You know, typically we, we look at different tools in the pro market, and mm -hmm. when the price goes down, so does the quality. So if I'm going to pay, you know, a third of the price for a straight die grinder, for instance, yeah. what am I giving up in terms of quality? Yeah, in, in all honesty, it may be some ergonomics, if that. I mean, they've done a good job at, at handling this. Um, is it the best, say, die grinder out there? Mm -hmm. Probably not, but, you know, I'd say it'd be in that 90% category yeah. Of, of really having the features and the feel and the performance still of... Still pro level? What's that? Still pro level? Oh, I thought you said still a level. No, it's <laughs> back no, there. We're, we're yeah. beyond the level. We've moved yes. on. Yeah, I, I, would, I would consider that. Definitely okay. an, an entry-level pro, you know, a guy okay. getting in the body shop or yeah. getting in the mechanic, something like that. What a great series to start with. I mean, it really is. And they've got the, I believe it's a... a Two-year, you know, no questions asked guarantee and a five-year kind of extended guarantee cool. on nice. you know, defects, things like so that. So now they so. just need to decide on a color scheme. Orange and blue would be great. Well, they just no. they have a lot of different colors. On yeah, the they, they do. Campbell Hospital over the years is kind of, it was yeah. like each tool almost had a different, you know. But no, they've kind of settled in, especially on the GSD series. Okay. And, Maybe this uh, will be the one. This sticks. will be the one they're going to stick yeah. with. It, so. It looks good. They look good. Yeah, they, they yeah. do. And uh, again, great price on them. Yeah. So uh, let's switch over to accessories. Um, mm -hmm. Milwaukee, man, they got their new, they finally got, I say finally, like, like as if they dragged their feet, but we just saw it so long ago, mm -hmm. but now it's out, the Milwaukee Torch uh, metal cutting, yeah. thick metal cutting. Yeah, Torch now has a, and Milwaukee now has a Torch carbide for thick metal cutting. So that's going to compete with the Diablo uh, Steel Demon that's out there, and Lennox also has a carbide tip, thick yeah. metal blade. Uh, so we did some testing on this. We took it into some 5 8 inch rebar just to see what kind of life we get. Rebar is tough because, I mean, it's, it, it's just it's not very consistent. You've got hard spots, soft spots, and it just tends to tear up accessories if you've got to cut it's a, through it's it. It's kind of a great testing medium for us. It yeah. is, yeah, yeah. So, and it's, you know, you get, it's, it's full thick metal and not just a pipe or something. So, anyway, uh, Milwaukee's claiming they got 25% more carbide on these. And it does, physically looking at it, you can see there's more carbide on those teeth. But, of course, there's always the question of, you know, how well is it brazed on there? You know, is it going to, you can have a ton of carbide, but if it doesn't stay on the blade, it doesn't do you any good. Did very, very well in our testing. Made 42 cuts in the rebar before we finally said uh, it's enough, mainly because my arms were jelly and the cutting speed yeah. was getting pretty slow. But during its useful life, uh, cutting speed is very, very good. Uh, it's not the best, it's not the worst. Uh, okay. It's kind of in the middle there. Uh, there is some chatter, because this, this is a 7 TPI blade. So it's uh, about one less than uh, Diablo's, right? Right. Diablo and Lennox both run 8 TPI. And so nice. as you lower the number of teeth per inch, you're going to expect some more chatter in there. Um, you know, anywhere from $11.99 to $67.99 mm -hmm. for the price. Uh, but, but that's going to depend on the length of the blade right. and the number in the package. So there's, yeah, there's a multi -pack. price versus single price. So it's right. Fine. Yeah, exactly. This is going to be a June launch. But there's also the fact that uh, Milwaukee has made a couple of tweaks uh, to the blades that we originally got. Those were some, some early samples and some, based on some feedback, they made a couple of things. So we're going to retest this again and just see if that makes any difference. I'm particularly looking to see if there's any, uh, any increase in the lifespan and uh, if there's any difference in the amount of chatter that's on there. Awesome. And, and what were you saying about uh, rebar? Um, that's what you tested on was rebar? Yeah, this time. Yeah. yeah. We've got some other tests lined up for later. Yeah, well, and I like rebar because just the properties of rebar is just so inconsistent right you know it goes from hard to soft and it's just a real trashy piece of metal <laughs> <laughs> stay trashy no. stay trashy no but really you know yeah. great metal to try things on <clears throat> because oh, yeah. it's kind of covering the gamut on mm -hmm. a lot of things so yep. cool now you uh you went out of town recently and you visited facebook I t <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh. i felt you know so here here's the kicker is that uh yeah facebook been in the news recently. Um, Just a little bit. And so I go in, I'm one of the first ones there, uh, and I have to give them my driver's license. Did they keep for like 45 minutes? Uh-huh. They've and got I'm a great thinking, track record of protecting that information. Just, <laughs> Just to be fair, Tim, they already had all that info. <laughs> good, good point. Yeah, I mean, you know. <laughs> they could have probably looked at Social it security, yeah. you're your firstborn. Yeah, yeah, yeah but, but no, they, they taught us how to put stickers on, on pictures. And uh, so some pro like some pro tips here, for yeah. you guys out there in the in the trades. <laughs> yeah, Look no, at these cute so puppies. Yeah. yeah, we went to the uh, the the Home Depot prospective event, and so it's where they they bring in uh, some you know 
pro-influencers, if you were, or pro-reviewers, as well as influencers, some media, if you will, yeah. uh, to kind of show them kind of a, you know, what Home Depot has to offer as far as brands go. So we had, you know, several different brands there from Milwaukee to Makita to Bosch, uh, uh, you know, Dremel, Ryobi, Rigid. Um, so kind of cover the gamut as far as tools go. And uh, so exciting time, you know, get to see some people, get to see some tools. Um, can't say that I saw anything game changing. Uh oh, we got a drink. <laughs> this brought to you by. You know, just take a sip of soda when we do that. So, <sighs> all right. So anyway, uh, fun time. Uh, had a good time and uh, saw a bunch of tools. Got to play with a bunch of bunch of tools. I did see a Dremel 3D uh, CAD laser. Huh. Yeah. That could be fun. Yeah, it could. Yeah. It could. Yeah, we got to figure out something fun for that. That'd be interesting. Uh, almost two and a half. Two and a half square feet? Close. No. Meaning you could almost buy two and a half mean green mowers to pay for the one 3D CAD Dremel. Ah. So a little, little over six thousand dollars. It's going to be a new unit of currency. It's yeah. So when you're at the, when you're at the Home Depot and you know you you're just feeling yeah. like you know I need a I kind of need a 3D CAD laser. Yeah. There's your six thousand dollar. Do know, they sell those purchase. at the Home Depot? Hmm. No, they're not. Okay. I was curious. Oh. Yeah. You know, you're like walking there. You're like ah, plug us all. Save my six a, grand and go buy a new bike. Yeah. Well, yeah. or that. Then will sell those. Might at not Home Depot be either. a bad idea. So that's about it. Well, that's fun. Yeah. Where'd where they take you to dinner? Uh, catch 21 or catch 22? Uh, uh, maybe catch 22. If they did catch 21, it would be really awkward. Yeah. That would be oh, weird. It'd be almost all the way there, <laughs> yeah. but not. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Really good dinner. Uh, excellent yeah. dinner. Excellent yeah. dinner. We, I had, mean, we're, we had a fun, fun we're, time. We're, we're mid afternoon, and I'm kind of thinking about dinner, so I'm, uh, yeah. I hesitate, but what'd you have? Oh, we had every. They had uh, fish, chicken, uh, steak. It's all uh, about the food. I mean. Yeah, you know, from lettuce wraps to ice cream to brownies. Was it just a buffet? No, it was family style. So oh, they brought uh, each table out, just a, a bunch nice. of big helpings. It was it was really good. Home Depot did great on that. Yeah. Facebook was interesting to say the least. Um, and uh, but anyway, hey, I know Gandalf, a lot more now. Gandalf, I'm going to need you to run a Chick Fil A. Um, number four. <laughs> With a large frosted sunshine. He's on it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> anyway. If there's anything I've learned, it's that I need to ask a little bit of, of forgiveness from you guys for this next segment, because we're going to talk a little bit about I-4. And from oh, for people in Florida, gosh. when we start talking about roads, and, and honestly, we really are complaining about stuff in a, in a unique way, because if, yeah. you know, if you're from L.A., you know about bad traffic. Mm -hmm. If you're from up north, you deal with uh, potholes and just really cruddy roads. And for the most part, we've got pretty good roads down here. Yeah. But, but, but Florida is notorious for one thing, and that is the I-4 corridor, which is, which is the, the most dangerous road in the country. Well, most dangerous highway is what they the rated. Most dangerous yeah. highway. And it's, I mean, you say I-4 and it just takes every bit of joy away from my life right nobody wants so, to be on that road nobody you know no. so just for quick explanation if, sure. if, if you've ever flown into tampa flown in orlando and driven between say the tampa beaches and, and disney world you've been on i4 you've been on I4. yeah yeah the interstate crosses four, across our probably state probably for a yeah. very long time <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah longer than you wanted. i'm sure you were on it longer than you wanted to be yeah anyway so why are we talking about i4 yeah so this is uh so you want to you kind of look some of this information up there's a big expansion uh, this will be the third since I've been here, and I've been here since uh, oh, '92. This is exciting! I love road work. On yeah, that yeah. So, what's going on? So, in the state's infinite wisdom, we have decided to spend 2.3 billion dollars with a B, with a B, with a B. on a 61-mile stretch of I-4 surrounding Orlando. Right, and actually, I think that amount of money is probably just for that 21-mile area, and then there's more on top. Oh, far, no, you said six, how much no, billion? No, 2.3 2. Yeah. billion, so yeah, that's the 21-mile yeah, version. But there's about 60 miles of road that they need to work on. So. Right, and that's going to be another 4 billion or so for the extra 40 miles. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, Orlando traffic, is, it's a nightmare. It's an absolute nightmare no matter what time of day you go through there. Of course, mm -hmm. I haven't driven through like 3 a.m., maybe it's okay then. It is, it's fine. Um, but they're trying to improve the traffic flow. And this time, it's going to work. <laughs> we believe it. 
Anyway, they wanted we all to have create. T-shirts that say "We believe." Yeah, yeah, we believe in. Uh, never mind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, they were creating a signature corridor called I four Ultimate, and right. then the twenty miles on either side of I four Ultimate is beyond the ultimate. Right. Wow. Which is more than ultimate. So because it's beyond. Kenny, uh, yep. number of people in Greater Orlando area. Two point seven five yeah. three million somewhere in that range. It depends on whether or not UCF is and in session. Two point something billion for the expansion. Tim, we're talking two point three billion dollars so, for twenty one miles of road. So do the math on that. That's a hundred million dollars per mile. Yeah, and I was just looking at it in terms of population. That's nearly a thousand dollars a person. Right. It's a lot. It's a lot of money for just. A road for it's, Orlando. But hey, it'd be a public road, so, you know, yeah, it's anyway, free. That part of the road. And all this money. Yeah, oh, yeah, they're going to charge us to drive on. Yeah. For yeah. That part. Now, they're going to be, they, you're going to have the same, but, you're going to have the same three lanes you have now on the outside. But the, like the idea of all the other toll roads, when, when it's paid for, then they take the tolls away, right? Like every other, it'll be yeah. just like every other toll road. So mm -hmm. they never take away the They'll toll. They'll never take but away But here's the, the great thing. Not only can you have the privilege of driving through Orlando, you can now pay to do it, and when traffic's worse, you can pay more to do it. Hey, do you know who this is Sounds great news great. for, though? Uh, road construction workers. Yeah, I mean, really, this is going to be awesome because you're going to be you're going to have good gainful employment for the next 20 years. No, not only that, heavy equipment sales. Heavy no, equipment no, 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 no. They're saying I mean, that this is going to be done in 2021. Yeah, so I mean, 20 years, you're going to have <laughs> just a, just a solid amount of. Anyway, oh what, yeah, there, there's, a lot, there's a lot. There's a lot going on here. Uh, 62 new bridges Ugh. and 27 replacement bridges going over to the west edge of this thing. That includes beyond the uh, the ultimate. Um, but what's kind of interesting, and and you've actually driven on, is is what DDI uh, yeah. interchange. It's a it's a diverging diamond interchange. And to me, this thing looks overly complicated. It looks overly complicated. I've driven on one uh, down in Sarasota. It was actually one of the first ones that, that was built in Florida. Um, if you've never looked this up, go check it out. We'll, we'll show you some video. And, um, but a DDI is, um, is essentially what it eliminates is it eliminates left turns across traffic lanes. And so the, the natural way that a, that a highway works in terms of exit and entry ramps is that you, you know, your right lane merges onto the, onto the highway, normal. Right, you're on the right, and the left lane has to cross traffic. You know, usually there's a light right there at the exit, yeah. and you have to cross two lanes of traffic. Also, the other way, when you're trying to get on the highway, you have to cross two lanes of traffic. This takes what is essentially four uh, crossing points and reduces them to two. And it does that by actually creating the portion of the road that goes either under or over um, the the cross highway. So, you know, you're thinking two major roads are right. intersecting. Right. You know, this, is, this, is a, this is a big intersection design. This is not something you see in a downtown area or something. So, mm -hmm. um, but at the crossing point, you're actually going to be on the left, you're going to be on the wrong side of the road while you're crossing either over or under another highway. And so people think, oh, that's disconcerting or you're going to be in the UK. Yeah, I'm, I'm, what's going on? Where, how am I getting, how are people? There's, they've actually done studies. It's very safe. People um, do not make, they don't, they don't go against it. I mean, it's very clearly marked. You, you really are, it's, it's like navigating a curve on a road. I mean, there's no cool. way you're going to cross traffic or, or bear right or, or right. do anything wrong mm -hmm. and end up in a problem. And it just eliminates one of the most um, uh, traditionally bad forms, of, uh, places to get an accident, which is crossing traffic right. making a left. And on a map, it looks really complex, but I've seen some statistics on this thing. It's very safe. That show there's a huge reduction in the amount of accidents that yeah, occur at these it's interchanges. Yeah, it's profound. So, it's a really good design. And, and actually, structurally, when you look at it, it's cleaner. It's just a cleaner way to intersect two major highways when yeah. you look at the design. So, yeah, so. yeah there's going to be six of these on this project. So it'll be interesting yeah. to see how that... But hey, you know, engineers win. Yeah, yeah, it's a good design. It'd be cool. So that alone, that'd be kind of fun yeah. to see. Yeah, so. yeah. Um, so, okay, well, this is usually uh, the point uh, where we skip OPE update, but since we already covered that... We can skip it. We, we can skip it for real. Um, and we can, uh, we can go and talk about... Uh, we do have a weekly giveaway this, uh, this time around, and it's going to be a Milwaukee M12 combo kit. 
This is cool. Yeah, this is a new fuel. You should let Tim go first, just because nobody's going to want to hear what he has to say after that. Well, because I don't have anything to say. He and he's not going to say anything. Anyway, yeah, we we reviewed that kit. It's a nice kit. Yeah, that's that that update is really good for Milwaukee. Good love update. That. A good yeah. update. So um, go ahead and, and hit up uh, ProTourReviews.com. It'll be on the right side. If you scroll down, it'll uh, it'll kind of pop up on you. Um, and then obviously we have our uh, ProTourReviews.com slash tool giveaways, uh, tool dash giveaways, and that's the page where it actually lives. But that's going to be a good one. You're going to want to register for that. So um, we saw something really cool online, and um, it was a video by Tom Hintz. Uh, yeah, I'll run with it. You know, I am the guy that stuck my hand in a table saw That's a few times. That's why you're running with it. I figured yeah. you'd appreciate it more. So, uh, Don't anyway. run with the table saw. No. <laughs> yeah. Well, you yeah, know. <laughs> frown on that. Yeah, it's it's heavy and anyway. Uh, so Put that table saw down. Right. All right. Good. <laughs> So, so Tom created this video. Actually, it's, it's several years old, and it's, it's made the rounds a few times. But he's uh, he's trying to show the audience what happens during a kickback incident, and because um, most people don't see it. I mean, it happens, but you don't have a camera running, right? Yeah. You know? yeah. And and the danger here is that you know you you get that kickback incident, and your hand slips. And a lot of times, what people are doing is they're they're pushing it through. And some guys at the hospital that I've talked to say. You know, a lot of times those injuries, they see it coming across the, the last two or three fingers as they push through. Well, he's, uh, he's actually using kind of a homemade push stick and intentionally creating that kickback. So this isn't a guy who's tired. It's not a guy who's been working a 10-hour shift. This is a guy who knows what's coming. He's intentionally trying to do it, and he still darn near takes his own hand out. So yeah, he's, expect, he's thinking he's expecting it. Right, and but you the neat cannot thing, expect it. Right, you just right, don't understand. Right. The neat thing is that uh, he does slow it and show it in slow motion for us, so you can really see the violence of what that kickback does. And if anything, it's just a really great reminder that don't take table saw work for granted. Yeah, um, you need to be, Definitely. you know, if you need to step away and grab a cup of coffee. And listen, just really quick, kickback. Okay, what's going on here? And the reason that that the use of a riving knife which is that, that um, piece of metal that comes up behind the blade. Mm -hmm. The purpose of that riving knife, which you always want to use, is to keep the wood that when, it, when the wood piece passes the blade, it can't twist to the left or the right. right. Kickback is caused when that piece of wood is twisted and catches the back end of the blade. If you remember, you look at, you use the table saw, and the pros all know this, that blade is spinning towards you. Mm -hmm. So if that blade uh, catches the wood, if that wood kind of exceeds, you know, goes across and catches the back side of that, blade well the, yeah i mean you know that the rpms of that blade are shoving that wood back towards you at ultra ultra high speed mm -hmm. and that's the point at which it also takes kind of your hand with it depending on what's going on or how you're pushing it through a lot of times guys will do very dangerous things like run their fingers along the side between the blade and the guard um, and so those are the, the that's what kickback is that's what he's demonstrating and he's even using a uh, like you said a, you know a push stick yeah. to try to <laughs> create his and it Mitigate still the, yeah. grabs him yeah uh, and he comes very, very close. So that was that was very uh, fascinating to see. <laughs> we saw something cool on Instagram uh, by John Malecki. He's a good guy. Great guy. Yeah, does a lot of really cool projects. Uh, check him out on Instagram. Uh, if you haven't already, look up his channel. Um, but he uses a product that I am actually in love with uh, that, I, uh, that we heard about from uh, uh, our friend John Buckley over at 1720. And it's basically Monocoat. And so he shows this on, a, he's using this on a conference table that he made. Mm -hmm. And uh, it is a one coat application of yeah. stain. And you can use either a clear coat or you can use, a, you can stain it a particular color or tint or whatever for the, there's all sorts of stuff. There's smoke yeah. effects. You can do all sorts of things to it. Um, but man, I'm telling you, if you're staining wood for a living, you want to check out Monocoat. You know what it reminds me of? This table here. This table was made with Monocoat, yes. yes. Yeah, and, yeah, brilliant product. Yeah. And, and lots yeah. and lots of ash. Yes, a little <laughs> bit of Monaco, mainly ash. Mostly yeah. ash. But Mon the thing about Monaco is neat. It's an oil-based product, um, but it, 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 the way they describe it almost seems like marketing speak, but it kind of makes sense. But it molecularly bonds to the wood. Right. And the reason that that's not just marketing speak is because what you can't do with Monaco is you can't really over apply it and you don't get the problem with stains where when you kind of make one pass over and then you kind of hit it again, you get a double coating in the middle yeah. and you get like extra dark streaks and things like that. Monocoating literally, monocoat mono mono stops. Yeah. I mean, you can only apply it and then it, when it makes that absorption rate, your ratio or whatever, when it gets right. in there, it's done. 
and you wipe it off. And then you, you wait for it to set up and you can, you can use uh, the, the common, you know, the, yeah. the A plus B version to kind of get it to cure faster or you can just put it on the one code and it takes right. a little longer to cure. The, the, one of the things I really like about it is like this table here, there's, there's no build up. There's, there's, right. it, you fill the wood, you fill the grain, yeah. but yet if we spilled our drink in here, you're not gonna get spotting, you're not gonna get the staining. Uh, so it is actually coating, it's bonding with it, but there's you still... Ice, there's ice in this cup, and yeah. it's been sweating the entire time, and there's no yeah, ring. We've got no rings on it, so really great product, applies really easy, you don't get those dark spotting spots like you do with a typical stain if you don't you know, apply it and wipe it off. Uh, correctly yeah he puts his on uh with a uh, like a like a plastic squeegee um we've used uh kind of that uh gritty floor polisher kind of almost material, like a like brillo, a, like a brillo kind of yeah. pad sort of thing you kind of just scrub it in. but it's a it's just a great product you got to check it out it's not cheap no but it's going to mm -hmm. save you so much time and effort um that it's really uh it's just really something solid you know so and we've got a tool tip for you we're gonna end with that yeah, we do. Um, so HEPA filter, right? Mm -hmm. yep. If you've got the option, you always use it. Because mm -hmm. HEPA captures more, so more is healthier. So more is better. More is better. No. No, no, no not better. More is not better. Um, there are applications where HEPA filters are required. There are environments where HEPA filters are required, hospitals and that kind of thing. And of course, there's the whole concrete silica dust issue that OSHA's got regulations on now. Um, but if you're not required to use a HEPA filter, you don't want to use it. And there's several reasons for that. That HEPA filter is designed to capture particles that are 0.3 microns mm. or larger. You know, the typical paper cellulose filter that comes with your dust extractor or even most shop backs uh, is gonna capture 99% of particles that are two microns or larger. Now, that's a difference of about seven times. You know, seven times, the, the, the paper filter is seven times bigger holes, but we're talking microns here. Um, that's a very, very small amount, but it makes a huge difference in the mm. amount of airflow that can come through that filter. Uh, so when you don't have to use a HEPA filter, if you stick with the cellulose, you're gonna get better performance out of your vacuum, whether that's a shop vac or a dust extractor. So you wanna use the filter that you have to, but if you can avoid HEPA, avoid it. Plus there's also huge cost savings between the filters as well. Yeah, good tip. Yep. And so there you go. Thanks. Thanks for joining us this week on uh, Pro Tool Reviews Live. Use the hashtag PTR Live to send in questions or uh, leave comments or anything where you want to get our attention. We're Be sure to let us that. know if you're going to buy a $2,500 push mower. Yeah, we'd like to know. I mean, you know, there's got to be. I thought we one asked guy well, one of you. Get him out of here. Yeah, our producer is going to buy one right after the show. Um, so. Um, anyway. Be sure to go ahead and subscribe to us on uh, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Uh, go ahead and uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, and by the way, our YouTube channel is actually two YouTube channels. Uh, it's Pro Tour Reviews uh, on YouTube and also Shop Tour Reviews on YouTube. And the same goes for Instagram and Twitter and Facebook. Uh, OPE Reviews, Shop Tool Reviews, and Pro Tour Reviews on those channels. But um, we love to get your questions. Thanks for uh, hanging out with us today, and we'll catch you later. Stay classy. Hey, can I sell this? Uh, no. Are you sure? I'm positive. Anything else I can sell around here? I'm trying to raise $2,500. <laughs> <laughs>